I've been doing quite a bit on Windows security issues lately, in particular with WannaCry, so now it's time to go on the flip side really, look at Linux. There are no issues with Linux, are there? Ha, nah, no, of course there are. A uh, the particular one is with SSH. I believe the old Mirai botnet is still active and probing ports, although it doesn't appear to be quite as problematic as it used to be. So I set up a fake SSH server on an Ubuntu 16.04 virtual box, and I wanted to see what password attempts were made against it. So the application I'm using is called... Um... Uh... Um... Hmm... It's called Password for SSH Intruders Transferred to Text. Yes, let's call it that. So by default, this um, <coughs> application runs a fake SSH server on port 2200. And what I did was set up a firewall rule on my router to redirect port 22 traffic to port 2200 on this particular Linux client. And I'm also running this Python script when changed in the background, so I can see when live changes are made. So the output of um, that application is in JSON format, and it specifies username, number of attempts tried, port, the software in use on the attacker, a timestamp, so the earliest one was 11.03 and it's 14.12 at time of recording. So we've got source IP, not sure what Mac is supposed to be identifying there, but uh, cipher in use and password attempted. So I've just cut down a few fields using cut, delimiter and the field numbers I was after. And the wind changes running the command to output the tail, the last line of that file. So that was a quick explanation about it. So let's dissect what has happened here. So username pi, password raspberry. Well, anyone who has played with Raspbian on a Raspberry Pi will probably recognize that password. So yeah, someone's testing for the default password on a Raspberry Pi. That's a basic password attempt, user user and 1234. I noticed 1234 features quite a few times. Why not go after 12345? I believe that's a more popular password. We've got root, root. Now this one, you might be thinking, what? why that password there? That's a bit random, isn't it? So if you pop that in on Google, and you'll soon see results for cheap Chinese camera. So if I put in Mirai. So Mirai has been rather lethal in causing distributed denial of service attacks, and it simply goes after poorly protected Internet of Tat devices, sorry, Internet of Things devices, and it tries a few default passwords. So this would be where Universal Plug and Play has been in use on a device and automatically opened the SSH port on the firewall and exposed its very simple password list. There's a list of passwords that would be attempted by Mirai. The UBNT root password and those zeros are in the list, I believe, so that is all going to be Mirai. Yeah, there's the zero. So any number sequences like that all going to be Mirai. And I think that's most of what has hit me there. We've got a couple of other basic attempts. Is Waldo in that list? Waldo? Why, why Waldo as well? That, that's very strange, isn't it? Is someone trying to play Where's Waldo or something? <laughs> very weird. Raspberry Pi, so that's going after a default Raspberry Pi password. The last one really is Dreambox. I'm not sure of what that's trying to attack. Oh, is it literally a Dreambox? Linux-powered DVB satellite terrestrial, oh, so a digital TV recorder. Most of the Dreamboxes come with an SSH enabled by default, but not all of them came with a default password as Dreambox. So clearly that's what it's attempting to guess. The last point I want to mention here is how I configured the SSH server. So it's pretending to be Dropbear, and I found that's in use on quite a few lightweight devices, which you would see on like Internet of Things. So I thought, that's a good one to aim for. Let's pretend to be a vulnerable Internet of Things device. So yeah, that's really it. Um, the lesson to learn here is don't have a basic password on an open SSH port. For home users, you probably won't have SSH exposed on your router by default. I'm sure you could set it up like that, but if you do, just take proper precautions. Disable root access into SSH. So that will prevent the username root from being used. Log in with another ID, and don't choose user security or admin, and pick a decent password, and that will prevent that attack. So that was a look at what happens if you leave an SSH port open to the internet. But thanks for watching, I'll see you all later. <laughs>